All right, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back. We're playing some more Mario Kart. New day, new beginnings. Early bird catches the worm. We're using King Boo today, so I uh, already got it set up there. All right, so we have done this whole row over here, and we started this other row last time. Uh, so we can either do the Leaf Cup, the Lightning Cup, the Triforce Cup, or the Bell Cup. Hmm. Ooh, it has another. Oh, it has the original Rainbow Road on there, which is not really original. It looks too brand new. Um, looks like we're doing the Leaf Cup today, and tomorrow I'll have the Lightning Cup. Let's go and get started with this. Here we go. Man, last night, what a day, man. What a night. Freaking, dude, I closed yesterday, and I'm closing today, and, um, uh, <sighs> you know, I can, I can handle a lot of physical tasks and stuff like that, but eventually, I mean, you just have to, like, slow down and take a breath, you know what I mean? Take a deep breath, and that's what I need. What was it? Yesterday, well, not yesterday, last week. I worked six days in a row, plus another three days, and that was completely brutal. Let me lower it. Damn, that's really loud. I did not expect it to be that loud. But, yeah, man, it's, uh, I guess I'm not really used to it, since I used to work at a car dealership. Oh, here comes the shells. Since I used to work at a car dealership, it was a completely different schedule. Obviously, you don't close a dealership other than just closing the doors. About a restaurant, you gotta like clean dishes, clean the back of the. It's just a bunch of stuff. You have to like move around. Just so much crap you have to do to close a restaurant. Um, yeah, there's a bunch of stuff that goes on. Um, I don't know, man. See, I'm not really used to it. More of a, I don't know. I kind of miss working at a car dealership, and then at the same time, I don't. I'm still like trying to like figure out what's the, uh, what's the pros and cons of both places. See, so at a car dealership, what I used to do there, even though I'd greet customers and take info and just a bunch of other miscellaneous stuff. One thing that would really bother me working at a car dealership would be those last second customers. You know what I mean? Like, you're closing at 6 p.m., right? And then there's some people that have to be coming in, like, around 5.50 and be like, Hey, can I get an oil change? No, dog, you can't get an oil change. We're, we're done. We're closed. There's literally no one back there. Most of the techs already leave, like, around freaking 5. Heck, 4.30 at the earliest. And uh, there's only like limited people back there already working on stuff from present day, or heck, things working from the last, the previous business day. Since uh, I feel like not many people understand this, like at a car dealership, there's gonna be different technicians working on different things. There's gonna be the technicians working on the used cars. And there's going to be, wow, another blue shell. Damn. There's going to be technicians working on used cars, which those are separate. Those are all internal. There's going to be another line of uh, techs working on on the waiters. So people are actually waiting, right? Uh, simple stuff. And then there's going to be another line of people working on drop-offs. Cars that are left for days sometimes. It just depends on what it is. It could be done on the same day. If they have the part in and a bunch of other stuff. It just depends. And then you got the uh, walk-ins, which are the annoying ones. The people that just come in out of the blue, just spawn in the middle of the... I don't know, they just spawn in. I mean, it's just kind of... It's kind of funny, you know? You're staring out into, like, the, uh, the front of the dealership. 
And there's like the road right that leads into the dealership. And they, they just spawn in, bro. It's like unlimited. And that kind of slows everything else down. So that's what gets really annoying. So I'm not sure what's really more annoying. Cleaning up after, like, closing really like a freaking restaurant or dealing with customers that are just entitled because you you'd run into a lot of entitled people at a car dealership if you guys ever worked at a car dealership uh, a car dealership man you guys already know what's up man so many entitled people man not all of them but some and the people that are like just so entitled are like some of the most frustrating people to work with like absolutely just some of the worst people man like, they think they own the place. They think they can get stuff done for free. I was like, oh, I'm a loyal customer. I bought five cars from here. No one told you to buy five cars from the same dealership, dog. And second, no one asked. And third, I don't care. That's I don't care what you do with your money. Good for you, I guess. I mean, congratulations. But no one asked. No one cares. And the fact that you're trying to befriend a car dealership is freaking insane to me. You guys really think I'll trust a freaking salesman? Hell no. You might as well just give your money to a freaking burglar or someone. At least they'll use it for something. I don't know. At least you already know you're getting robbed regardless. But these freaking snaky ass, like slimed. Salespeople, they like sneak their way, they like slither around your freaking wallet just trying to like make you sign a paper and it's over. I've always told myself that I will not want to buy a brand new car from a car dealership. And uh, some because like I can't afford it or get a loan or anything like that, but it's like I know how it works, you know what I mean? It's like one of those things. Like, once you work at a, in the car industry, you know how shit works. So, I mean, I've seen some of those salespeople, man. They're just really, really scummy, man. It's so messed up. It's hard to, like, trust an actual good salesman. What, what's a, what's a good salesman for me is someone that's really honest, like a really honest salesman that that's really good at their job but they can't sell dirt because a really good really 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 good salesman even an asshole salesman would sell you dirt and somehow you'd still fall for it you'd buy it you'll buy a jar of dirt but there's some honest salesmen out there that well they're honest you know what I mean they're uh they're there Ooh, got him. They're there and they are... Well... They are, uh... I don't know. I don't know what else to say after that, really. But it's... it's uh, once you see an honest salesman, you know. Most likely, they won't have that much clientele. Uh, not because they're bad, but... Because they're honest, you know? They're not gonna go to every single damn fucking person and... Try to fuck them over, you know what I mean? And it's, a, it's really impossible to get a good deal on a car. Because at that point, they're just making up prices. There's literally people out there that literally overpay for a car. See, working at Mercedes, I saw a... Uh, so we had a car in the sales room. That the MSRP on it was... It was a Mercedes SL. And you guys know, just look up a Mercedes SL. Those cars go for, eh, they'll go for like about starting around one, 150, 200 grand. Literally a person in my town bought it for $800,000. Why? He overpaid for a car that's going to drop in value as soon as you running out of the freaking lot 20 per like 20 percent gone you're fucked and that's the thing about buying use or buying new cars you know once you drive off the lot man 
kiss that money goodbye. And I've always said this, you know, buying cars from a car dealership or whatever, cars in general just aren't the best, uh, they aren't the best investment. And yeah, if you have like a billion dollars in your, onto your name or whatever, if you have a big ass net worth, that probably doesn't mean anything to you, but for an average person, uh, that's a lot of money to lose, you know what I mean? Whether you buy a car for 30 grand and once you drive off the lot, there goes 10%. You know what I mean? So buying cars is just a terrible investment if you're a normal person with an average job, you know what I mean? I prefer my cars used and, uh, yeah, they're already uh, <laughs> appreciated in value big time. Either they have scratches on it or whatever. I mean, I bought my Honda Pilot for three grand, and it had a hundred and fifty thousand miles on it. It was a two thousand six, and uh, the most I've done on it, I've replaced most of the stuff myself anyway, since I used to work on cars anyway. So I just do my my own work. I just buy my own parts. And speaking of that stuff, I actually wanted to make videos of me fixing cars and teach you guys stuff. I think that'd be pretty cool. That's kind of what I wanted to do, actually, with this channel. Like, eventually, but I just never got around to doing it. And I've just stuck to gaming ever since. <laughs> I can only fix one car, like, so many times. I just want me to take it apart. Probably give it advice or something, I don't know. Uh, but yeah. That's, uh... What the heck? That's most of, like, the, uh, I guess, experience or, like, the in-world of working at a car dealership. What I recommend for someone to work at a car dealership? Well, for one, you have to be 18. Uh, well, at least in Texas, you have to be at least 18 years old to work at a car dealership. Whether that's even being a valet or porter or whatever, and have a driver's license. You do need a driver's license to work at a car dealership. Obviously, you're going to be driving all freaking day, and they can't have someone behind the wheel. Uh, car wash, I think it's a little bit different. Uh, I think you can kind of get away with it. But. They would want people with a license. Um, also, be an advisor. Being an advisor is probably so stressful. I mean, working in, in the service drive, like on a service drive, and seeing these advisors just be just absolutely just mobbed by the freaking customers sometimes, man. There was actually this one time when uh, one of my. Uh, one of the people that worked there, bro, literally got death threats. Like, the customer literally said he was going to show up to the guy's uh, house and shoot him. Like, bro, it ain't that serious. I, that's one thing about being a freaking service advisor, man. Just being on the phone all day. And like I said, I mean, just, just talking to, like, freaking entitled people sometimes, man. That's That shit's so fucking annoying, man. It's... It's mostly just frustrating. And that's just one of those things I would not be able to do. Being a service advisor? Fuck that. That's just fuck. You know what I mean? Nah. <laughs> not for me. That is definitely not for me. I enjoy talking to people, but in that line of work, I think I'm good. And that's it. Damn. There you go. I, I'll try to have like you know some stories here and there, and any of these episodes because I know this is me racing around on a track. We're playing Mario Kart. I mean, there's only so much I can do. <laughs> so I'm trying to make these as entertaining as possible. At least me telling a story or whatever, or just talking about random stuff that's going on. But. Yeah, we're done here. Um, I'll catch you guys on the next one. As always, you guys take care. Uh, peace out.